new energy vehicles are gaining popularity in China's Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. Official figures show that from January to May this year, nearly 1,800 NEVs were sold in Urumqi, the regional capital, an increase of over 380% year-on-year. In Yili Kazakh Autonomous Prefecture, 2,200 NEVs were sold in the first half of this year, up 64% year-on-year. Uh, 三是充电桩现在也随处可见啊。我们现在就想这个购买新能源汽车作为这个代步工具。China has taken measures to bolster the NEV industry, including extending the preferential policy for NEV purchase tax. Many car dealers say this has also boosted sales of the NEVs. 国家对于新能源车免征车辆购置税的优惠政策，充电桩手续都安装起来特别方便。Type-003 Fujian ship, China's third aircraft carrier, was launched recently from Shanghai's Jiangnan shipyard. Fujian ship is the first to replace the ski jump system with electromagnetic ejection. According to VOA's report, the public is curious about how the ship can secure its power demand. Fujian, equipped with blocking devices and a full load displacement of more than 80,000 tons, is believed to use conventional steam propulsion instead of nuclear power. Meanwhile, the electromagnetic ejection requires a lot of power when a fighter jet takes off. According to CNN, the use of conventional power could limit its reach. A senior fellow of the China Power Project at the Center for Strategic and International Studies or CSIS, Matthew P. Funayoli, said, This may be less of a factor for China right now, as many of its interests are in the near seas. Beijing's mouthpiece claimed that the Fujian ship's core technology is a complete set of integrated power systems developed by Ma Weiming. Ma is a scholar of the Chinese Academy of Engineering. However, Yao Cheng, a former Chinese People's Liberation Army Naval Command lieutenant colonel, showed his doubt about the declaration. In an interview with VOA, he said he was skeptical that the Fujian ship uses traditional power and could use diesel power to propel an 80,000-ton aircraft carrier forward to secure its electromagnetic catapult-assisted launch system. Yao said that the Fujian ship's displacement is more than 80,000 tons, while the fuel capacity on board is 18,000 tons. This means that nearly a quarter of its weight is diesel, and a 901 comprehensive supply ship is needed to follow it. According to Yao, using three diesel engines to push the 003 aircraft carrier forward is understandable. However, it is unlikely that these three engines can also provide power for electromagnetic ejection due to the power shortage. Yao supposed that the most likely method is to install two or more diesel generators specially designed for electromagnetic ejection on board. Yao said, it is equivalent to having five diesel generators on board. So the amount of oil consumed by the five diesel generators is very large. Yao added that from the scientific perspective of energy conservation, it is impossible to obtain 2,000 watts of energy from 1,000 watts of power. He supposed that Ma was boasting about the aircraft carrier's full power to earn money, while in fact, the Chinese Navy currently does not have such technology. Zhou Ziding, the Exploration Time Channel's host, has recently revealed the origin of Beijing's aircraft carrier electromagnetic ejection technology in his program. The Military Knowledge Channel's host said that Beijing introduced maglev technology from Germany in 2006 to prepare for electromagnetic ejection. However, applying it to aircraft carriers and engineering is complex. Joe took as an example the U.S. Ford-class aircraft carrier with a 91-meter-long TV ejection trajectory to ensure the acceleration of objects at such a long length and in the marine environment, a large number of diffuse impurities in the air may produce magnetic fields. That kind of influence will affect the efficiency of the ejection. As for Beijing's claim about the electromagnetic catapult technology, Yao said in an earlier interview with the Epoch Times, I don't need to verify it. I know that it was all stolen by the CCP's spies, citing analysts. VOA reported that if the Fujian ship is equipped with an electromagnetic catapult system, it does not mean that the carrier-based aircraft can really take off with electromagnetic catapults.
The Fu Jian needs to be officially tested after its recent launch, so its real strength could be revealed soon. Chung 物在自欺欺人因信守香港基本法及国际承诺五兆跳馬照跑都已經不見連自由民主都已經盪然大家都看出來中國打印香港人民的已經被世界看穿被香港人民唾棄我們也更可以知道我們一定要堅守台灣的主權自由民主中國的所謂一國兩制根本台北市副市长黄珊珊发文所以我们支持香港的民主人权跟自由Last week, a flood swept over Xiaxi, ancient town, Shangrao, city, Jiangxi, and the whole city turned into an aquarium. People from all classes suffered during the flood, and many lost their homes or factories. Many citizens said they did not receive any warning announcement beforehand. However, both locals and officials confirmed the source of the flood was discharged water from the reservoir. Zero flood notice from the government, enterprises go bankrupt overnight. According to Jimu News, Wang, who uses an alternate name, recalled her experience during the flood discharge. After the torrential rain on June 17th, Xinjiang's water level not only withdrew, but was one meter away from the land border. A neighboring village resident told her, they received a warning to move their property to the second floor or higher. However, Wang did not receive any notice. In the evening that day, knee-depth water entered her factory, and Wang nearly died from an electric shock while moving her computers. When they returned to the factory after transferring the equipment to the warehouse, the water level was more than one meter high, and she could only watch as her property became submerged in the water. She told the reporter that the fabric and clothes are worth 1.2 million yuan, nearly $180,000, and are the results of many years of hard work. She said watching her life career fade away in one night was heartbreaking. Around 9 p.m., she received a message about the reservoir from her friend on WeChat. Wang wasn't the only one to lose their business in one night. Another trader in Xiaxi, ancient town, also watched his frozen product business go down the drain. The reservoir said it had issued a notice beforehand. On June 28th, Many officials from various areas admitted that the floodwater on June 20th was released from a reservoir after heavy rain and that they had sounded the alarm beforehand. A spokesperson from the Qiyi hydropower station told a Jimu reporter that the flood control and drought relief headquarters decided to release the flood on June 20th because the stored water exceeded the warning level. Several notifications were made before the incident. Still, why the masses received the notice at 6 p.m. remains unknown. 
an official of the propaganda department of Shangzhou, said that the rainfall was heavy and the reservoir had already sent out a notification before releasing the floodwater. When the reporter mentioned people who said they hadn't received the warning of flood discharge from the reservoir, she said those statements only represent their personal views. During his visit to the Hong Kong Science Park, President Xi Jinping said under the support of the central government, Hong Kong has leveraged its own advantages to make achievements in basic research, talent cultivation and development of the innovation and technology sectors. When talking with academicians, researchers and young representatives of innovation enterprises, Xi Jinping called on Hong Kong to better cooperate with mainland cities in the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area. He also called for strengthening the collaborative development of enterprises, universities and research institutions and striving to build the Greater Bay Area into a global highland for scientific and technological innovation. President Xi Jinping added that the government should make efforts to provide young people with more opportunities for growth. The Science Park is the largest research and development and business incubation base in Hong Kong. It's home to more than...